All right, so we can go ahead and get started. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Miss Jessica Finn. And I'm Miss Kelly Van Horn. Uh, and we would like to thank you so much for coming to our first ever virtual science research symposium. Uh, we hope that you and your families are doing well during this very crazy time. And we really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day uh, to come and join us and help us to celebrate our seniors and showcase all of the work that they've done uh, in the science research program. Uh, the seniors uh, who are in the program, they've been working really hard on their research for the past three years that they've been in the program. And uh, even though we can't come together as uh, one whole group and have our traditional kind of symposium, we are really, really ecstatic that we are able to celebrate them um, and what they've been able to accomplish in this kind of virtual setting uh, tonight. So again, we, I thank you so much and uh, we hope that you enjoy. So as Ms. Finn said, this is our first ever virtual symposium and we really do appreciate everyone coming out to see all the work our students have done given the current circumstances. This evening, the juniors in our program will introduce the senior presenters. While the students are presenting, you can type any questions you may have into the Q&A and the students will answer all questions at the end of their presentations. Okay, if there are no questions, um, I'd like to introduce Priya and she, uh, yeah, she's going to introduce the next presenter. Thank you. Kelly Phelan will be presenting on simulating Troxler's effect in 1D to determine how the brain processes motion. She leads this project under the mentorship of Dr. Troy Shinbrat and PhD candidate Mary Pat Ryder at Rutgers Department of Biomedical Engineering. In the fall, she will be attending Northeastern University in the honors program studying data science and biology. Okay, so um, I'm presenting on simulating Troxler's effect in 1D to determine how the brain processes motion. Um, and this was conducted with uh, Rutgers Department of Biomedical Engineering under the mentorship of Dr. Troy Shimbra and PhD candidate Mary Pat Ryder. So as an introduction, uh, I'm going to talk about what motion-induced blindness is and Troxler's effect. So basically, motion-induced blindness is a visual disturbance, also known as an optical illusion, and it's when stationary objects disappear from view when a moving object is present. So when you focus on one aspect of an image, parts of the periphery disappear from view. And this occurs due to the way the brain processes information as it's not able to focus on both aspects at once. So if you stare at the green dot in the center here, um, you'll see that the yellow dots disappear. And that's because the yellow dots are in the periphery and the moving background makes it confusing for your brain and you're unable to focus on what's happening. So um, you can only focus on one aspect at a time and you'll see the yellow dots start to disappear. And next, Troxler's fading effect. This is when you fixate on a particular point and something in the peripheral vision will also disappear. And this is enhanced with small, low contrast or blurred objects in a background. And this is the same idea as motion induced blindness, except there's no requirement of motion. So again, if you stare at this red dot in the center here, um, the blurred and low contrast blue will disappear um, because the red is much more vibrant and your brain can only focus on one aspect at a time. And you have to make sure your eyes don't wander uh, or else the blue will not disappear. So next, this is known as the lilac chaser, and this combines both, both um, Troxler's effect with motion-induced blindness, and if you stare at the cross in the center, um, you'll notice that the faded um, purple circles will begin to disappear, and instead you'll see like a light green um, dot go around, a, go around in a circle. And this is the model that I used for my research, um, but instead I'm going to simulate it in 1D. So again, um, you see this circle go around um, and this is because the pink colored dots are um, blurred and they're going to disappear from view. 
So the purpose of this um, project was to determine um, how the brain processes motion because it's not entirely known currently. And also people with autism and schizophrenia experience optical illusions very differently. Most likely it is due to the way their brains process motion. Um, optical illusions such as Troxler's effect and motion-induced blindness are used in ADHD testing to see how focused the brain is because um, someone without one of these conditions is able to focus on the dot or cross in the center and the optical illusion occurs, but people um, with certain conditions are unable to do this. This also contributes to a larger debate about hardwire versus acquired with the brain because um, this is the difference between nature and nurture because there are a lot of things that your brain is hardwired with versus um, patterns that you learn. So my hypothesis was that by changing the weights of the values, I expect to find the model the brain uses when processing motion. Um, this was to see how much information is remembered prior to and post viewing the illusion. So next is my methodology, and this is how I animated the brain's processing model in 1D. So the process starts in zeros. The zeros um, go to the next row each time, and they're circling around, so um, it comes back over here and they're going to represent light and dark respectively. Um, and this is done by using conditional formatting in Excel because I wanted to ensure that it's continuous. It's more than just eight by 17. So next um, was creating the actual image. So I had to assign colors to the values. So the white here is the same as the rotating zeros and the black is all the ones. And this is the same idea as the lilac chaser here, but shown in 1D because these are the zeros. Um, or the, the green circle you would see going around. So next I created the percept. So I use cellular automata, and um, this is using matrix multiplication on a filter I chose, which was negative 0.25, zero, and one. And so um, I had each uh, of these corresponding numbers multiplied by the corresponding um, section in the filter. And then I got this data and then normalized it to a zero to one scale because then I could assign um, grayscale colors to them. And so furthermore, I used, um, converted the numbers to a visual scale of black and white. So zero, again, is still white, one is still black, and then anywhere between that is the grayscale. Next, I had to make the processing model, and this is um, making a percentage of how much the brain remembers before and after viewing the illusion. Um, this is just an arbitrary um, percentage to be tested. I chose um, a 0.5 to 0.5 ratio, meaning that 0.5 is remembered prior and 0.5 is remembered post. Um, so each row is viewed as a new time step, and the weighting is applied with respect to this. So this is um, my processing model, and the model interacts with the previous time step to mimic the brain before and after viewing the illusion. So you can see here, um, these two time steps, they go um, from here to here to here and is a different time step and so on. And so we made sure that, um, to ensure that we know what the brain remembers, you need to use multiple time steps in this. So next was um, continuing with animating the processing model. Um, we wanted to simulate the different ways the brain remembers what was previously seen and what will be seen. Um, and this is exactly what makes the Troxler's effect and lilac chaser work, is your brain remembering information before and seeing the new information. And so I used VBA in Excel to create a for next loop that cycles through different weights. Um, and here is the code I used in VBA, and this allows me to cycle through different weights based on the cycle. I chose a cycle of six, and the weights um, initially was 0.5 and 0.5, but I also made them cycle so um, that it repeats in order to keep applying the different filter and weight. So now, now on to the results. Um, this is the animation of the brain processing model. So at the start of the animation, the current image is based on the filter here, and this is um, after you apply the weights of 0.5 and 0.5. And in the animation we'll see next, it changes by 0.1 each time. So here you can see the model once you press move, 
um, it's going to cycle through um, each time and then it's going to change by 0.1. And this model shows how the brain would perceive the illusion. Um, this can be analogous to um, when you look at the sun, um, after you look at it, you see white spots. And this is the grayscale colors are those that we're seeing. It's because you're remembering like a different extent of the illusion, like you remember a different portion of the sun when you look at it. And when we get to here, this is would be if you remember nothing of the new illusion and the entirety of the old illusion. Um, so relating this back to Troxler's effect, it's apparent that Troxler's effect is extremely hard to replicate. Um, the initial project intended to get an exact approximation of this in 1D, but instead we did something else um, in that we found how the brain is processing this information, um, seeing what extent of the illusion is remembered. Um, so now to the discussion and conclusion. So it's still unknown which weights should be used. Uh, the model merely shows the different ways the brain can see it. Uh, and this will help us understand what image the brain sees prior to and after a certain period of time. So although we don't know which weight, um, it's helpful to still have this model. The results show that different weights can be used because you still get some sort of um, cycling of the zeros and ones. At no point was it completely black or completely white, which is good. And we're still unsure of which weight is correct. And there could be a possibility that different brains use different weight, weights, whether that be from person to person, or um, if someone has a certain condition that prevents them from seeing it the same way. And also um, a another question is if models ever change weights, this could be with age, or just if the brain uh, remembers something more specifically than something else. Furthermore, um, we want to determine how people with autism, schizophrenia, and other conditions experience optical illusions and motions. Again, we are uh, unsure how it is different, but this model will help us understand more about these conditions because we already are using different weights. So we can see that um, the difference in between something as basic as an optical illusion to apply it to something broader like with driving. Um, so in conclusion, future studies will determine the specifics of the model. This is merely the groundwork for them. And also we want to relate it to different conditions and how that changes. But this shows that a model can be made and it can be manipulated and tested. So I just wanted to thank everyone who has supported me in this journey. Um, first, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Troy Shimbra and Mary Pat Ryder for guiding me in this project. And I owe a lot to my parents for pushing me in STEM and science research. My dad helped me immensely in learning how to use Excel and debugging my code. And this project literally wouldn't be done without him because I had so many nights I was like, oh, can you help me with this? And then for my mom, for always pushing me and supporting me to do my best in everything I do. Next, I would like to thank the science research program for giving me opportunities. There's a lot of things I wouldn't have done had I not been in the science research program. Um, and this is the thanks to Ms. Finn, Ms. Van Horn, and Dr. Brinkman. And finally, I owe these past three years to some of my closest friends inside and outside of science research class who helped me become the person I am. And if quarantine has shown me everything, I really miss going to science research class. And now I'll take any questions. If there's no questions, thank you very much. Montville Township Public Schools. Educate, inspire, empower.